for the Aussies. The Opals lead it four to zip. This is Harmon. Plays professionally over in Italy. She's going to work down low against Hannah Zabek, who's one of the most athletic players that has ever worn the green and gold for the Opals. Batkovic against a much smaller Natalie Taylor. Just didn't get the roll. This is where the Kiwis need to move the ball quickly. She Harmon took the wrong option then. She had Warburton open inside. because just good tempo control and they distribute the ball, move the ball around and most importantly, the effort on the glass, the second shot and the commitment to uh, keeping the ball alive, outstanding 18, stuff. 18. It was Lisa Warburton who did get the offensive rebound there. She's a fantastic rebounder. Again, in the Siebel competition. Over here as Bakovic steps outside and makes the basket. Australia lead at 6-2. Cox now from the perimeter can't make the shot. What can the Australians do? Zabek turns the corner, beautiful. Any time the Open's been able to put the ball to the floor, they're getting to the basket way too easy, easily with the penetration, either with the pass or the penetration uh, off the dribble. So I'd expect New Zealand perhaps to. Maybe also on current form, look at a zone defense just to try and pack it in as we see a foul. This time I think it was on Carly Wilson. Might have no, on back Susie to Bakovic yes. for the push there. Just trying to shove the screener up so Carly Wilson could come underneath and it's a little bit too strong. Natalie Hurst in for Australia. And Rachel Flanagan takes a seat. Natalie Hurst is playing professionally in France at the moment and i surprised she didn't get the starting job, actually. But she's into the game nice and early. Just three minutes have elapsed. Meek and Rusko comes off the screen, and it's all the bottom of the net there. Open it by Rusko as well. Come off that screen, was open. Little step back. Splashes a two. Zavik with the lob pass, looking at Bishop. I'll tell you what, Harmon did pretty well there defensively. Didn't concede position. Yes, as we see down low. And that, I like the defensive strategy there, trying to front the, the low post. The least amount of times the bigger girls for the Opals can touch it down low, the better off they, the New Zealand are going to be. And there you see Batkovic again, just a little step out from the underneath out of bounds. She's inside, outside, she puts is. the ball to the floor. Oh. Looks can be a little deceiving. And at the other end as well with the steal. She's very kissing, nimble. Kissing one off the window and then next minute she's up and in the lanes. She can shoot the triple too, but she Look chooses to put it on the ground. Look at this. Bishop tried to keep it alive. Here's Harmon, two on one. She's got some help. Purcell's a three-point threat. Probably shouldn't have picked up her dribble there, but she did well to make the basket. Six to ten, the Tall Ferns. Uh, Staying aggressive, which is important, and Taylor, I, I do apologise, I think I'm switching between Purcell and Taylor, and of course Purcell is Natalie's maiden name, and Taylor her married name. And, um, we try and be consistent. No, no, we, uh, we all know what you're talking about, that's the main no thing. No A couple of substitutions for the Opals. At least Penaluna's in for back bitch, Zabex on the offensive glass. Mariana Tolo has also checked into the game. Abby Bishop has taken a seat. So plenty of time. Tolo gets it into Penaluna. Thought she might have been tapped on the arm there. No foul called. Zavek, unlikely. But it's nothing but the bottom of the net. It is. And there's that inside-out presence as well. Penaluna, she's just uh, good vision. Kicks it out for the wide-open three and... At this level, if you're that wide open, most of these girls have got the ability to knock them down. You, you, at this level, you're more surprised if they miss it when they're that wide open rather than when it goes in. It's interesting talking to Coach Carrie Graff as we have another look at Hannah Zavek. Talking to Coach Graff during the week, she was saying that Hannah Zavek's probably uh, 
she, she's almost playing better for the Opals than she did for the Bulleen Boomers last year in the WNBL. It's almost like she's been able to take her game up to another level when she's been required to. It's a pretty impressive, uh, I guess, pretty impressive stuff from the players. That's beautiful work from Hurst into Penaluna. 15 to 6. It is, again, good position. You see the size advantage trying to front the low post. If you don't have pressure on the ball, that pass is always going to be on. So if you're going to front the post like they're trying to do New Zealand, just need a lot more ball pressure on the perimeter. Cox is short with the shot. Wilson scraps with Edmondson. It's going to be a Tall Ferns ball. We can hear the referee Elena Chinova from Russia in the background. He is the accented voice that we can hear. And I think the rules in uh, the Oceania qualification, there's a one Australian ref, a New Zealand ref and an international, a neutral. So they share it around a little bit. Spot on. Umpire or referee Vaughan Mabry is the person with the ball at the moment from Australia. And the third referee is Tim Brown from New Zealand. Kerry, excuse me, but uh, Kerry Graff really prepared to show, throw her team around. She's made already got 10 players to see some court action so getting everyone involved very early on the piece you imagine has stepped in now there's Carrie Graff so successful with Canberra. her Canberra Capitals in the WNBL she's won six championships with them plus one when she was the coach of the Sydney Uni Flames also had WNBA experience as a assistant and head coach so She's got vast international experience. Have a oh, look at Zavek. Have a look at the athleticism from Zavek. And now the Aussies look to run. Hurst can pull up and make that shot. But choose to stick with the plan and go inside to Tolo. But it was brilliant stuff down the other end from Hannah Zavek. And that's what she's capable of. Just kept her balance and stayed with her. She's a tenacious defender. Timeout here and it's over 15. And then Tolo drew the foul. So we've got a timeout here at the cage called by the Tall Ferns. We might see if we can have a listen to what the Opals camp have to say. Carrie Graff currently chatting to her assistants. Now she'll come in and address the team. Australia lead it by nine. Containment, we've got to just tighten up, not open stand, square them off, okay? And then a couple of little missed blockouts. I mean, they've been taking tough shots, that's good. The running is a big plus here, okay? So you guys start on the block out, so we want to run, keep pushing tempo. Good deep seal, okay? we got some subs in here, wall buttons back in and we're pitting the big one, okay? Armin's out, okay, so we go to the big. You've got a... Uh, You've got wall button. You've got whippity the, the tall ones, okay? And then you've got the point gun. Let's, you stay with Edmondson. You have the other perimeter person. Whose ball is it here? Shots. You're shooting. Okay, shooting. Get a 34 hold here, okay? Next offense. All right, let's go. Regular horns. Regular horns. Here we go now. Pretty straightforward there by Kerry Graff. Just uh, tidying up on the defensive end when she talks about an open stance and uh, squaring him up. That uh, Just opening up, trying to force him to the baseline or the middle. And sometimes you can open up a little bit too much rather than play him straight up. But I tell you what, New Zealand haven't got off to the shooting start they'd like. They're 3 of 12 from the printer, only shooting at 25%. And Michaela Cox, she's 0 of 3 and she's a prime mover the uh, New Zealand team have any chance at all they really need to her to find a way to uh, put some points on the basket on the board in a efficient manner so I'd like to see just to try and create get her going get a cheap basket work her around get make sure she starts to feel good about herself and gets her confident confidence up and really go a long way to helping the uh, prospects of New Zealand so Lopez lead it by 10 here's Edmondson Played for a handful of teams in the WNBL and shooting is not necessarily her strong point and that's the shot clock violation because of course Edmondson's shot didn't hit the ring and Warburton, a bit of a mental error there, she wasn't aware of it, she should have just gone straight back up having done the hard work and got the offensive rebound. Well that's right, New Zealand look a lot better before when they were running some flex options and that's where you've got the low cutting going off along the baseline, they get it through, through a few hands, that time one, one two pass then go on the pick and roll really need a lot more ball movement and move the man in the ball to create some more easier scoring opportunities. Edmondson turning into the trap. Here's Cox from the perimeter. It's on the bottom. That's good stuff from Michaela Cox. And that's what she's capable of and that's what we are talking about before. She knocks down that three, starts to feel good about herself and 
then she can start to uh, look to create a little bit more off her own bat. Maddie Hurst likes this stage. Last time she was on this court, the Canberra Capitals, led by her and Lauren Jackson, won the WNBL Championship. Of course, she missed last season, being she went to play in France and had a great season over there. And it was Canberra and Bulleen once again in the grand final, but this time the Bulleen Boomers were victorious. First ever WNBL title. It was. It's a very, very famous Victorian and WNBL club. Major shooting the ball and missing there was Danika Wapiti, making her Tall Ferns debut this year. Former Silver Fern, a former international netballer, one of a couple of dual internationals in the New Zealand side. Here's Madgen, loves to put the ball on the ground and get to the rack. That was pretty impressive stuff for Madgen. The Opals lead by 11, two minutes to go in the opening quarter. Tess Madgen, of course, is the sister of Ben Madgen, who plays for the Sydney Kings. So last year's Rookie of the Year in the NBA. And an outstanding Ten prospect. Back. Pushing the back. Talented family. I'm not sure if she refers, prefers to be called the sister of Ben Madgen, or we should be calling Ben Madgen the... Her, her brother, I think, that's here it. today, yes. That's it. Because <laughs> she's playing and he's not. So. Well, at the minute, that's the case. But no, Tess Madgen, a very good uh, player, had a good season. And... Uh, Just a good athlete too. One of the strengths of the Opals, they shooting the ball so well. They're at 56% already, 9 of 16 from the field. Outstanding perimeter shooting. Five seconds on the shot clock. Wilson tries to get into Hodges. Nice finish from Laura Hodges, formerly known as Laura Summerton. Joey's looking at me like, what are you? <laughs> what are you talking about? You messed it up. But no, she got married recently, so she's playing today under her maiden name, just to confuse the both of us. <laughs> yeah, is that not bad? One touch, one basket. Here's Bates, the other dual international. Beautiful shooting stroke there. I tell you, I've got a nice little anecdote for you a little bit later on, voice relating to uh, Susie Bates, but we will won't wait for quite a moment of the match because we're counting down towards quarter time, under a minute to go. Hodges short with that one. The shot clock doesn't reset. Only six seconds on the shot clock. Imagine, she can do it at will. She can just get to the rack at will. Couldn't finish that time and Harmon comes up with the loose ball. Bates wants to take on Flanagan, but she's not taking on just anyone. She's taking on the two-time WNBL Defensive Player of the Year. And Rachel Flanagan beat her on that occasion. Good play by Flanagan there. Read it well and good no call by the officials. Hint of a block or a charge, one of the toughest decisions referees have to make in a game of basketball, but that time, good no call. Here's Wilson, misfiring, good offensive rebound. There's only eight seconds to go until quarter time. So they're setting something up quickly here, the Opals. It's Flanagan, and time will expire here at quarter time. And a scintillating opening quarter here from the Opals. They have been good enough to double the Tall Fern score at quarter time. It's Australia 24, New Zealand 12 in the opening quarter of the Oceania Olympic Qualification Series, Andrew Gaze. And I'll tell you what, I reckon the shooting stats will be very much in the Australians' favour. If we have a look at those, the Aussies have started off brilliantly at 52% and the Kiwis at 28%. It's, uh, they're going to have to lift their game. We said that was one of the keys for them. Well, it is, and uh, I have greater concerns for what I see down on the defensive end by New Zealand. They just uh, haven't had an answer, and the ease at which Australia have been able to get very good scoring opportunities, shooting at 52%, need to pick up. If we take a look at some of the highlights, and there you see Susie Batkovic and Abby Bishop getting to the basket very, very easily, and uh, from the perimeter, when you're trying to step off these girls, they've just got uh, too much touch, too much too much athleticism, too skilled, and I, I honestly think New Zealand should have a look at a zone defense, because too much happening around the basket. I know the Opals can light it up from the perimeter as well, and you do expose yourself from the perimeter if you sit in a zone, but right now, the ease at which Opals are getting those scoring opportunities would be a huge concern. Well, the coach Kennedy Kerryama, I'm sure, will be experimenting. He's been around the uh, the program for some time, having been an assistant, now taking over the head coaching position. And I guess it's one of those things where you, how certain? I mean, you obviously come into a game with your plans, 
And how quickly do you do you have to go away from them? Well, how quickly do you have to move from plan A to plan B when things aren't going your way? Well, right now he has to think of an option, like I said, on the defensive end. Sure, they're having their woes uh, offensively as well. When Anytime you're shooting the ball at 28%, that's not going to get it done. But they need to keep this score as, as low as they possibly can. And uh, if, if New Zealand are going to come out here, if they have to shoot 90 points to beat the Opals, they're going to lose yeah. 100 out of 100 times. It's as simple as that. But if they can keep that score lower, around the 50s, and they, they base it all on the defence, it gives themselves at least a, a chance, and right now they don't have the answers on the defence. Yeah, no so, second quarter about to start here in the Oceania Championships qualification series for the London Olympic Games. And it's game one. And the Opals lead it by a dozen. And that's going to be a gold ball. Unfortunate for Gillian Harmon, who came into this game with a big reputation for being a real scorer, but two points so far. She actually top scored for the Tall Ferns in their two matches against the Opals earlier this year. Both of those coming over in China. But it's Susie Batkovic who's leading the way. She just hit that basket. She's got eight points. Harmon's working hard. She's got the three rebounds, so she's applying herself, but the, you can see the defensive intensity, not on that occasion, but <laughs> throughout the first quarter, and the attention that they're giving to her and also Cox, it's just made life pretty miserable for them to get uh, any good looks. With Rebecca Jew with that basket, 21-year-old from the University of Hawaii. She's a naturalised New Zealander. Of course, in these international games, countries are allowed to play just the one naturalised player. And Rebecca Jew it was who got the nod. She's working hard down low. Gets the pass now. Bakovic looks a little bit upset at some of the treatment. Slaps the ball away from Jew. Now Purcell. Noted as a three-point bomber. Cannot get it to go. And the Opals are away for the long rebound. Hodges is there for Bibby. Beautiful. Oh, an excellent play from Purcell. Or Taylor, I should say. She's looking at McMeek and Rusko. Now Harmon, into Jew, had good position, but Bakovic just says go, go, gadget arms and disrupts the offense. McMeek and Rusko got it from Harmon. And once again, Anna Zavik it was coming across and was able to uh, disrupt the play with nice hands and Kennedy Kerryama wants to talk about it. So we might have a listen to see what he has to say. I wonder if his own defence we mentioned at all. It's 26 Australia, 14 New Zealand, two minutes into the second quarter. I think we did a really good job. We hit Joey, perhaps you got nothing. We kicked back out, we hit you, but we're going to get some movement. We finally got some movement there. I don't know whether there was either a foul or, just a, or a block. It had to be one or the other, surely. Okay. Remember with that motion here, Dewey, I think probably your matchups probably not the way to go. So if you're coming off that cross screen, go to the short corner and stretch it. When Jill sits a down screen, that gives her the pin and the quick isolation inside of the back end of our transition. But we're making good leads and strong leads early. We're able to give the ball up and getting good things. Okay, so a little bit of rhythm now for us. Defensively, the key for us is pressuring their perimeter passes. We're going to cut the supply to their bigs. All right? Do a good job of containing, staying in front, and getting early bumps. But we've got to press the bigs. All real good sound advice in that timeout. Concentrating mostly on the offensive end and how they're going to try and create some scoring opportunities. But uh, he's spot on in what they have to do to try and cut off the supply to get it, keep the ball out of the hands of the bigs and just not getting that ball pressure on the defensive end. And as we've alluded to in that first quarter, real concern about getting some motion before they create their scoring op options. So... Good time out. Here's Zavek. Not feeling it that time. Taylor swoops up a loose ball. Meek and Rusko into Harmon. We get some of that crisp ball movement happening. There are some experienced players out there on the floor for the New Zealanders now. And Cox misses. Due with good position. Gets the offensive rebound. She's picked up her dribble early a couple of times and found herself in a spot of bother. Shouldn't leave Harmon open like that, the Australians, and she couldn't make them pay. So it's a foul on two, and it'll be an Australian ball from the end. I like what I see in Rebecca Jew. She's come in, got a little 
uh, made a basket, but the work that she's doing on the offensive end to keep Susie Batkovic honest on defense to a point where Susie Batkovic has just been subbed out of the game. And quite often when you've got such an off potent offensive score in Susie Batkovic, the harder you make her work on yeah. the defensive end, it can slow her down on offense and uh, great work by Duke. She looks physical too, Duke. Not afraid to sort of no. throw, her, throw her size around. And Real presence out there on both ends of the floor. Bibi loves her left hand and she's just so experienced, Jess Bibi, at 32 Number years of one. age. She's just able to sort of get into the perfect position to draw the foul. Oh, she's just one of the all-time great shooters. The work that she did this year in the WNBA. She can fill it up from anywhere over the center line. Yep, and she's not afraid to try. And not afraid <laughs> to whack him up, and that's what we love about Jess Bibby. But she I, also, as we saw earlier, she had a little turnover, and uh, I think she might have been uh, just giving little Hodge a bit of a nudge because she made a beautiful play down the middle and tried to get it to Hodge, and Hodge uh, wasn't able to capitalize on it. Now, the lively yeah. form that this year Jess Bibby took away one of your records, which oh, was... No. Uh, Oh, the no. most the most shots per minutes played in like any sort of Australian basketball tournament I ever. I like it. Yeah, I think it was pretty much. She took about. Well, she basically every time she touched the ball, she put it in the air play for the Canberra Capitals last season. And look at Zavik. What an impact she's having at the defensive end. Picks off that pass. Unfortunately, she wasn't poised enough to finish. And Harmon just loses control of it. Well, a comedy of errors there in that 20 seconds. These teams just feeling their way, trying to find some rhythm. Of course, they haven't, neither team's been in camp for a very long time. That was good hustle there from McMeek and Rusko. And in the contested situation, the possession arrow goes towards the Tall Ferns. Now, good hands, good help. Hand. And there we so see the jump ball, but uh, good help. But listen, Drew, tell me this. What do you think of the position arrow rule versus the old-fashioned jump ball? The worst introduction of a rule in the history of this great game. Thank you very much. I'm glad because we whinge about it all the time when we're covering the WNBL games, and I'm thrilled that you agree. No, I, I agree with that. I tell you what, though, having coached this year at the junior level in the under-12, it is a perfect rule for the under-12 level. Okay, right. But not at the senior level, any sort of senior junior level or the uh, older junior levels, it's just uh, you work so hard to create a, 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 a contested situation that results in a jump ball and it's just, just to determine it by a little arrow on the score bench, just hard to comprehend. Number 10. There's a Number foul 10. in the rebounding situation, it's against oh, Number 10, Lisa Warburton. Really getting no luck or no success uh, on this offensive end. Still only shooting at a 6 of 23, 26% from the field for New Zealand. It's just not going to get it done, is it, really? And the Australians are significantly better up at 44%. That's why the Australians are double the score of the Tall Ferns at the moment. Michaela Cox from a long way out. Wow. Zavek with the offense, oh, sorry, with the defensive rebound, but she coughs it up. Good vision from Harmon, and Cox finishes. Tolo couldn't change the shot. So the New Zealanders creep a little bit closer. They're not going away, and the Australians have been pretty inefficient at the offensive end this quarter. What can Hurst do? Zavek looks at Bishop. Coach Graff was just so impressed with her on the tour to China in June this year. Abby Bishop. With Abby Bishop. Reckon she played the uh, the best basketball of her young life on that tour and she really stood up as a, a presence after a statistically significant WNBL season at Dandenong last year but not really as good as she'd been at Canberra the previous couple of years. And uh, I understand that she's moving on from uh, Dandenong. I'm going... Want to go. She's moving on, I believe, to Adelaide. So she is. Uh, the lady that's been in hot property, a lot of teams would love to have her on their roster. And let's not forget, she does have a WNBA championship ring to her name as well. Although she never figured all that prominently in that team, she was still there, a part of it. Well, you can, you can tell us all about that. Love it. Yes. <laughs> Just a great opportunity for her though to learn as we take a look at the replay here down low. Abby Bishop just a little late on the rotation and uh, Gillian Harmon with the finish. One shot, Couldn't one quite only. get there in time. New Zealand 
just hanging around. They are. Just doing enough to keep the scoreboard ticking over and hanging around. And let's be honest, even the most optimistic New Zealand fan would realise that they're never ever going to get in a situation where they're going to have a commanding lead on the Opals. They need to keep the game tight, keep it as close as they can, and uh, down the stretch try and find a way to eat out a win. Natty Hurst with that finish, and, and you're spot on, Andrew, the, and that's what happened in over in China. It was 79 no, to green. 74 in the first match that Australia and New Zealand Seven played yellow. over there, and it was a very similar situation to that. It was just close, basket for basket, the entire game, and unfortunately down the stretch, the Kiwis just couldn't get it done. They were out-rebounded, and the size told. In, in the second matchup in that China series in June this year, the Australians got a hold of the New Zealanders and beat them by 29. But that Tony was, Edmondson finishes well there. And that came after the night after they played against China. And for the first time, I think, in the history, uh, New Zealand actually beat China they in did. China. Now, you cannot disrespect that result. That is an outstanding result. It certainly is. They're the only team to do that this year, actually. The Opals couldn't do it. The Opals had two cracks at the Chinese over there, and they lost both of the games. So it was a credible performance by the tall ferns. Let's not forget though that uh, Lauren Jackson, Penny Taylor and Lizzie Cambridge are not a part of those games. Not that we offer any excuses, but they are very free significant additions to any team. Beautiful pass from Hurst to Tolo. And the former Canberra teammates combined beautifully. The big girls run the floor so well for the uh, Australian team. Have a look at the pass. Touch pass right on the money. I'll tell you what, I know, look, I know you're a big Australian rules fan. And Mariana Tolo sort of reminds me a little bit for our Australian audiences of a, a sort of a Drew Petrie type. She just works hard and she's just the big player. She's always a target, does all the team things right. She's in every contest. And uh, I tell you what, she's an impressive youngster at just 22 years of age who have already been to a world championship. She's one of the baby bigs that might take this team to the next level. You're dead right, and uh, great to see the pass by Natalie Hurst. When you see your bigs running the floor that hard, always good to reward them, and uh, that encourages them to run even harder for you. Beautiful finish there, isn't it? Excellent creativity from Edmondson. Got it into Warburton, and Lisa Warburton will go for the go to the line for the bonus. Beautiful dribble penetration from Edmondson, and used her long arms effectively to wrap the pass around. And that's it. And no matter who you're playing against, if you've got that ability to put the ball on the floor and it requires help, then it does put a lot of pressure on the defence to uh, get those rotations going. And the Opals a little slow that time, and. Great play by New Zealand. Create that scoring opportunity. Here's Hunt from the perimeter. First action for Nicole Hunt. And bang, that's on the bottom of the net as well. She splashes the triple. The girl from Warrnambool playing in front of, well, as close to a home crowd as she's probably going to get played for the Opals here in Victoria. She comes off the bench and goes whack from the three-point line. The thing about the uh, youth of today, not they, don't, they don't lack confidence. No, they do not. And uh, normally you're coming in as a rookie and you're looking to work the ball around, feel your way into the game. Not nowadays. Come in, whack from the land of plenty, and uh, she gets the reward and knocks it down. All right, so it's a time out here. Three and a half minutes to go until half time. The Australian Opals have a commanding lead. They're up by 15. Here's their coach, Carrie Graff. Well, we'll get to carry Graf when we can. And Australia lead at 49 to 24. And now we're going to listen into Carrie Graf. They're going to lock them up for three minutes defensively. The possession is good. Okay, at this end we're okay. But this we're going to get locked up and switch all the mids. Okay, all the mids. Okay, let's do this. Let's go, let's go four man switching. Okay, four man switching. All right. Oh, you, you haven't been involved in that, have you? Yeah, you're out. So we're going to switch first down, switch that, and then switch the ball, or then we get no, You can get through that, okay? okay? So let's switch.
two on balls except the fleecing ball. Okay. If fleecing and on ball, let's go. Let's go ten jam on it. Okay. Look, three minutes we need to lock up. So it's switching all on balls with you guys. Not other screens unless you're hung up. Okay. You got that. So it's not four man switch everywhere. Just on the on ball. Okay. And there's a reaction to what we saw with that penetration coming off the high pick and roll and the required the help. So Kerry Graff is now going for the last three and a half minutes to have a look at her switching defences. But not on the away screen, she's only going to run the switches on the um, on the on ball, on screens. ball screens. Yes. And uh, might as well have a look at it. She's not afraid to try anything up. She's, uh, as we say, one of the master coaches is... Natalie Taylor. And, and when, you've got, when you've got such athletes like uh, the Opals do have, you're less fearful of those switches because even if you get matched up on a, on a smaller opponent or a bigger opponent, you, they've generally got the capabilities to uh, to cater for that along the journey. So, Kraft's got and she's going to have a look at it. Here's Hunt, also known as Flea, as Carrie Graff referred to her in that timeout. Elise Penaluna needs to just finish off her good work down low. Wasn't able to do it there. This is our first look at uh, young Hunter and she coughs it up. She does. Cardinal sin of basketball. Oh, what a pass in from Hunt, but unfortunately Penaluna lets her down. It was a beautiful pass from Nicole Hunt. Teaming up with Elise Penaluna and they now go with a little handoff and Nicole Hunt drives in and she's fouled. So she'll be heading to the line. That last play there on the New Zealand end, we saw the uh, the cardinal sin of basketball we'll never fake a back door. But have a look at the pass that you so beautifully called. Was that an accident? I don't think so. I think it was spot on. <laughs> I think it was spot on. It was just the Petaluna threw it in the bottom of the iron, which wasn't, I think, wasn't what the play was supposed to be. No, I wouldn't have thought so. But uh, they had the girl down low, but they went cross court. And Hunt who plays under coach Carey Graff at the Canberra Capitals. This is the second Penaluna. Again, couldn't finish. We'll get at least Penaluna's field goal stats. One of five now. And that is probably the one flaw in her game, Drew. When she's on, she can do anything, the 23-year-old. But just sometimes she can be prone to misfire and lose a little bit of confidence, at least Penaluna. And she's going to have a seat in Susie Bakovic will check back in, who's leading all scorers at the moment with eight points. She is, and uh, four of six from the field. Shooting the ball at a very nice clip. So the Opals lead it by 16 at the moment. Just over two minutes until half time. Here's Madgen. Just over cooking it. Now Taylor picks it up, gives it to Hunter. Hunter's been a New Zealand junior since under-16s and made it into the senior team. That was a beautiful move down there by Harmon. She confused Mariana Tolo and then blew by her and finished it well. My word, and uh, good speed and a drop step to get to the basket. Oh, an excellent athleticism from Edmondson disrupting that pass. There's just 10 seconds on the shot clock here for Australia. This has been... A poor offense for them. They collapse on Bakovic and a foul is called on Taylor. You're right, the offensive set wasn't all that pretty, but they still are able to move the ball around as we take a look. And you get into a pick and roll, when things break down, you'll find 95% of teams in the world these days, when the offense breaks down, they'll go to either a high pick and roll or on the wing pick and roll. And this time it was the high one. And Bakovic rolls to the basket and with that size advantage they can just throw it up anywhere and she's uh, going to catch it and force the foul you already mentioned before that abby bishop's going to join the adelaide lightning this season so is this lady susie bakovic so they're going to have a pretty potent sort of a uh, a front line in the wnbl season when that kicks off on the 7th of october which is the same of course as the uh, the nbl season with the defending champion new zealand breakers i'll tell you it's it's hard to say those words, isn't it? <laughs> oh, beautiful defense there by Bakovic. Throws away Cox's shot. It was beautiful defense, but hopefully New Zealand don't go away from what they're doing because that is still a very nice play. A couple of passes, a good away from the ball movement. Get it to one of your stars, one of your real strong scoring options in Cox. And as long as they don't get disheartened, and those options will present themselves on a more regular basis and good scoring options. 
24 yep. second shot clock violation because the ball never touched and, the rim. Uh, 24 second violation. Jews back into the game. She She's, She showed some good moments earlier on in this quarter. So New Zealand are trailing by 14 at the moment, but they're only trailing this quarter by two. So they've got into the flow of the game, but that is beautiful play there. Again, back to Bishop Bishop combining and uh, hard to stop. And the problem there is the pressure on the ball. You have to front the, the low post because you don't want the bigger girls to catch it down low. But if you don't put the pressure on the ball and they can just lob it in there, you're cooked. Edmondson loves to create. Jew fights for the possession. Here's Taylor. Needs a basket for her confidence. She hands off to Harm, and that's a tough shot. And another 24 second violation, or it would have been had the Opals not come up with the ball. So that's two in a row. They might need to look at changing something up. But we're getting very close to half time here. Bakovic fading away. And the Tall Ferns come up with possession. Just 20 seconds on the clock here in the second quarter. Harmon goes early. And now the Australians will slow it down with 10 seconds on the clock. Not sure that was a smart move. Harmon's one of the better scorers and she needs to get good looks, but they had the chance to hold it for the last shot of the game, but it looks like it's going to work out for them. Only close to three seconds, 2.7 seconds left. And that's just a bit of a waste there, Flanagan. Again, a no-call. Good no-call from the refs. She just got... Uh, oh, she just fell over, yeah. So here's Jew, they need to create something. Michaela Cox will get the inbounds pass and have probably had another second or so, but she almost dumped it. That would have been spectacular had it gone down. It didn't. And so it's half time here in game one. The opening match in the Oceania Championships and it's Australia 43, New Zealand 26. The Tall Ferns will need to lift after half time to get back into this one, Andrew. Gale. They most certainly will. I think that... Um just the latter stages of that second quarter, things just started to get away from the New Zealand team. But uh, they got a lot of work to do, a lot to think about in the uh, halftime break. No doubt they will. Their coach Kennedy Kerryan will be addressing them. And we look forward to your company again after the halftime break. At the moment, it's the Aussies leading by 17.
points at half time, 43 to 26. And we're almost ready for a start in the second half. And so let's have a look at some of the numbers. Andrew oh, yes. Gaze, my co-commentator. And I'll tell you what, the Australians are in front in most of the key statistical categories. The shooting, we said, was one of the biggest issues coming into the game and also the rebounding, and the Aussies are in front in both of those areas. Well, if you look at this, uh, these statistics, it, it really is just the field goal percentage that's provided Australia with its uh, very significant advantage. And 31%, slight improvement overall, because remember at the end of the first quarter, they're only at 28%, that is New Zealand. Australia come off the boil a little bit. They were into the mid-50s in the first quarter, and they've dropped down to 43%. But it's not just the, um, the, the, the shooting percentages, it's the scoring opportunities that are being presented out there. And what has happened is that Australia have really been out of pounded inside, led by Susie Batkovich, who's just been a monster down low and provided Australia with some very, very good scoring opportunities. She's had nine points. She leads all scorers at half time. And the other, the power, lady who started at power forward, Abby Bishop, had eight points in the opening half, along with five rebounds as well. Elise Penaluna had five boards as well for the Opals. For the New Zealanders, Gillian Harmon, she leads the way with seven points and five rebounds as well. Michaela Cox has five points, and she's just two of ten from the field. She's not going to die wondering, Drew, but she just needs to connect on a couple of those shots. And you know what? She really has to shoot the ball. Michaela Cox is one of the prime movers, as we said, right throughout the game. And they need to create some scoring opportunities for her. The other girls have got to work for her, set some picks, create, get her free, get her in the game, and then anything can unfold from there. In the second half here, it's the Oceania Championships Game 1. There Old it is. is fouled by Wolberton and, and Carbon Cup uh, start to the game again the Opals go to Babkovic they she puts it to the floor with her favored left hand if you're gonna stop this girl get on her left hand take away her strength just allowing her to get there just the late recovery caused the foul and Warburton there just a little slow to react off the dribble penetration so Susie Bakovic, the first player to get to double figures. Both both teams have returned to their starting fives to begin this half. This is Kate McMeekin Rusko, of course, with a, an Olympian in Beijing. Michaela Cox was actually played in the sea ball. A oh, beautiful pass. Warburton and her combined. They both had excellent years playing over here in Australia in the sea ball competition. Michaela Cox for Sandringham was the fourth top scorer in the league at just under 19 points a game. And Lisa Warburton, who is having a seat now, was the league's leading rebounder. She grabbed 11 boards per game. And Rebecca Jews checked back into the game, Andrew, and you've been impressed with her work in the opening half. So let's see how she goes. She's going to have to box out here. She does that, but her teammate Harmon comes up with the rebound. One of the toughest things for New Zealand, they just don't have the depth of the Australian team. Primarily, they go with seven players uh, the Opals on the other hand all 12 players got s some uh, reasonable minutes in that first half so they're going to be fresher throughout the course of the second half you would think so the Opals with a 17 point lead which is the same as they had at half time we've traveled just over a minute in the third Cox hassles Flanagan South Australian Hannah Zavex a Victorian and Gets it towards Batkovic, who lobs it for Bishop. Nice little inside-out game from the Aussies, and Zavek's aggressive and draws the foul on Rebecca Jew. You've got to wonder how that happens, don't you? These teams would have scouted each other backwards and forwards, inside-out for months, and when you see a little shuffle cut like that and you get the nice lob pass in, that would frustrate the coaching staff no end when there's such easy scoring opportunities off one pass, back pick, cut, and the girl's wide open. Hannah Zavek at the line. She's leaving the Bulleen Boomers this year after a championship season and heading to Hungary, would you believe, to start the, the next phase of her career over there in Europe? Yes, and I'm not sure what the Hungarian league's like, but um, no doubt she'll find out at least. No, and many of our girls have had uh, vast... European experience, but good to see a lot of them coming back and playing in the WNBL and let's not forget that next year there is the chance that the great Lauren Jackson will be back and the prospect of Penny Taylor playing in the WNBL. Exciting times for women's basketball. Yeah, we're all certainly excited about that as Harmon travels and we're not short of New Zealanders either in the uh, WNBL 
this season coming up. Michaela Cox, Tony Edmondson, Angela Marino, of course, who for New Zealand fans who may have just joined us is missing this match. They hope that she'll be right for game two. Angela Marino, of course, would have been the starting point guard for the Tall Ferns. There's a mismatch down low here. Bakovic and Ju comes across with the help, but you cannot stop that. And again, though, same play that we ran before. They made the one extra pass to the forward spot. They got their big, the little, the big screen at the high post. The big getting down low. They got to do a better job of denying her the ball. Pressure on the ball. Purcell needs to get her shooting motion going, and she hits with that one. Natalie Taylor with that basket. She doesn't have too many points in the game. She's now up to five points. And this is Flanagan. The Aussies get a second crack at it. The Kiwis should have done a little bit more to secure that rebound. Wow, that's... Zavik's feeling confident. And Bishop aggressively fouled by Jew. And well, Abby Bishop will go to the line. She's just a worker down low. Abby Bishop, look at it. Position. She's not one of those ones where you look at her and say, well, here's a supreme athlete. She uses her... Her craftiness around the basket, uses her body, gets great position and uh, got those good hands and good touch around the basket. She's a beauty. Not a bad record as a 22-year-old to already have three WNBL championships to your name. And a WNBA championship. And a WNBA championship as well. As the New Zealanders make a substitution, Rebecca Jew with four fouls sits down and Danika Wapiti the former Silver Fern, the goal shooter, who was part of that New Zealand team in Delhi that... Uh, oh, no. That, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to bring it up, but she was oh part no. of that team in Delhi that upset the Aussie Diamonds in that thrilling gold medal game. It was a thrilling game. And uh, I tell you what, when New Zealand and Australia get out there on the netball court, that is entertaining sport. And we just need to uh, have the same progress with their women's basketball and hopefully we get similar results because that is fantastic sport when you see those two teams do battle. Yeah, no doubt at all. And the Aussies, of course, getting their own back in the World Championship final a little bit later on. Earlier this year, I should say, it was. Which is great to watch. Good pass from Bakovic to Wilson. In towards Hodges. Purcell. Taylor did well. What can Taylor do? One of their more experienced players reaching the peak of her powers at 28. Beautiful little backdoor cut. Nice team play. Cox needed to finish. She scraps hard, but really shouldn't have made that error in the first place. There have been a lot of missed layups from both teams. Indeed there has, and there's a real worry down low, although Batkovic moves, uh, missed that one. If she's able to receive the ball that close to the basket, nine times out of ten, she will score. Last play down the floor, good ball movement by New Zealand, nice little backdoor play. It was the classic example of Operation Successful Patient Died because everything worked well, it just couldn't put the layup in the, in the basket. Good transition from the Aussies, not a hard close out there from Edmondson, she needs a, she needs a sub, Tony Edmondson. They she do, wasn't they... able to get after that, there's been a couple of wind sprints and... You've hit the nail on the head, right now New Zealand looking very fatigued. And it looks like there's a couple lined up at the uh, Kiwi bench. They might be just rotating a few through. And they need to. And a time, timeout's, timeout's been called. called and that's yes. a good timeout just to give a spell. There we see. Gee whiz, that was not a lot in that. But uh, pin the foul on Hodge. Hodges. Is. All right, so we have a timeout here. Just under six minutes until three-quarter time. And it's Australia leading by 19. In game one of the Oceania Championships, we're going to be eavesdropping on Carrie Graff's timeout in just a moment. And we'll head in there now with the Opens. Dave, throw the thing up. We're going to tighten this end up. Offensively, okay? I want to go loops, okay? And regular horns. Loops and regular horns. So, Natty, remember, you can throw it and fade. Okay, you can dribble off hard and make it play, all right? Defensively, stay with the 13, okay? With you guys on the ball screen, 10 jam with you. 
right here. We're showing 20. Show 20 out of this on the first pass. Back to 11. Is everybody clear? Focus. All right, here we go. Well, I don't think you'll ever see Kerry Graff too concerned in, uh, in this series, but right there we just see her go up a few octaves and just the anxiety level, not happy with the efficiency on both ends of the floor, really. She's... She's good at giving quotes to the press, and some of them are pretty simple but effective. And her recent one, her one a couple of weeks ago, was, listen, we want to practice winning, not practice losing. So she wants to get this done, and she wants to get it done right. She's having a look at her zone defense now, fall back into a 2-3 a zone. So just trying to mix it up, and they showed a zone, and they've gone to a man-to-man. -man. You know, I was going to predict that, actually, but I didn't have the guts to on that occasion, so... <laughs> Let's see how she goes. She is, a lot of these players have played a lot under Carrie Graff. Seven of the 12 playing have won championships with her with her under the Canberra Capitals or been to the grand final with her coaching the Canberra Capitals. So as that ball just went into the crowd. And is that your old mate down there uh, just in one of those corporate boxes? That's right. Mr. Lenard, Copeland. Leonard Copeland's here. This uh, oh, really after him, haven't they? Really exciting night of basketball coming up. And let's not forget the Boomers taking on the Tall Blacks. That's going to be a real contest. Really looking forward to that. It'll be a thriller. Of course, the teams in the Women's Series, the Oceania Series, playing for the Landon Shield. Named after Lorraine Landon, one of the great... There we see Leonard Copeland. And right next to him, on his left, our right, is David Patrick. He played for the Canberra Cannons, grew up. He was a Melbourne Tiger junior. Went over, been the, played at the University of Syracuse, also the assistant coach at St Mary's, and now is the currently living in the United States in Houston, working for the Houston Rockets, if you don't mind. So Pretty handy organisation that is, too. And, and they've come out here to send Dave back out to Australia to check out this series, and of course... That's not, uh, Brad Newley was drafted by the Houston Rockets. And David Anderson spent some time at the Houston Rockets as well. Oh, Zavek again crashing the boards after the missed shot from Madgen. Interesting Thomas Abercrombie too. I know Dave Patrick really likes young Thomas Abercrombie from the New Zealand Breakers. Oh, first. Wow, the slot misfires on the pass. Bates, beautiful floor running there from Harmon. Really, sorry, uh, but real sloppy play by the Opals, and you can see why the anxiety level on Kerry Graff going up a few notches because just uh, no too many turnovers. No She's actually wonderful to watch when she gets a little bit anxious. She is demonstrative over there on the sidelines. Imagine it's hassled by Bates here, and the shot clock's counting down. It's down to four. The Opals are looking harried at the moment. And that's a 24-second violation. Wouldn't surprise me if Carrie Graff calls for time here in a time minute out. because, time yes, out. there has been a timeout called. It's actually been called by Kennedy Kerry Arman, the New Zealand coach. But uh, but I, I think the Australians also need to talk it over because they are under some pressure here. But we will have a listen in to see what the Tall Ferns are talking about. I reckon they might be happy they trail by 15 at the moment. But hey, I think we still, I still challenge you guys to lift your communication and intensity defensively. I still think we can lift it out a couple notches. Uh, next play here. Uh, D, I want you to trail on this one. Jill's, you start low. Nat, I want you playing point on this. Bates, I want, Kate, I want you ball side. Bates, I want you weak. We're going post play here. Jill's flash hard. Receive. D screen away. Kate on the back cut. Engage the defender by holding your hand away. Sideline ball. Then that fake yours. You're coming off. We run the two-man game out of that. If we score on that, if we score on that, we're going one, two, two, half to a track. Back to our three. Back to it. Back to three, two. Back to three, two. If we score off this, we're one, two, two, half to a track. Back to zone. We miss. Back to man. So we're going to have a look at some extended defence. Uh, but I tell you what, the last two or three minutes of the New Zealand team has been the best defence we've seen from them all night. Yep. Really harassing, harassing the ball in the lanes, cutting off the penetration both with the dribble and the pass and good signs by New Zealand. So here's Natalie Taylor, one of their more experienced players. She's been playing... Brilliant basketball for the Ballarat Rush and the Siebel, and she spent time 
in the WNBL at Logan and she gets it into Harmon. And Harmon is Harmon's starting to uh, exert some authority in this game. She had seven points up to half time. She's now up to nine, but she's also had half a dozen rebounds and three assists. And I, I guess she's come she's into the game with the biggest reputation as far as scoring goes for the New Zealanders. And experience. She's got that international experience playing overseas and she knocked those down like she knew exactly what they're doing. And here we see just a little half-court trapping defence mixing it up by New Zealand. Trying to again maintain that defensive pressure. They fall back into a 2-3 zone. They'll only just do it for the one possession and then go back to their man-to-man -man, which has been so good the last couple of minutes. Rapidi doesn't have the strength to combat Tolo down there. Mariana Tolo finishes well. New Zealanders, the Tall Ferns are about as close as they've been and it's since early in the second quarter. And they're getting it done on the defensive end. They've outscored Australia in this quarter. Oh, Wapiti on the offensive glass wants to finish here and does. And they're up on the Kiwi bench. They're getting excited over there. And as they should, Australia now down to 39% from the field. And... New Zealand, they're starting to make some inroads as well. They're up to 33%. So, a really good three or four minutes by New Zealand has got them back into touch with the Opals. We're coming towards three quarter time, three minutes until that break. Susie Bates has a rest, so does Kate McMeekin Rusko. Taylor Cox is back in for New Zealanders. She grabs this rebound. She's got Harmon on the right wing. Can she see her? Will she go herself? Edmondson now. Well done. Beautiful finish, Tony Edmondson. Not known for that, but she did well just with the pull-up and the margin is back to 11. My goodness, we have got a contest on our hands. Great little spurt by New Zealand. Imagine. Oh, yes. Interesting, Harry Graff was going for Jess Bibby for a little bit of instant offense. She was going to check in, and now she's got the hook after that basket's hit the bottom from Magic. So, Harry Graff, a bit more comfortable with a 14-point margin game. Absolutely. Plus, you, when you just know to three, it's hard to... When you're feeling that confidence to, to get pulled out of the game and go sit on the bench, you can lose it. You want to milk someone if they're hot until they die off. So Carrie probably just prepared to take a little the foul on the rebounding contest. Again, another unlucky one. It was both girls going for the ball, just get tangled up. Could have gone either way. But uh, Madgen stays in the game and they'll probably look to her and see just how hot she is. Again, a little trapping defense by New Zealand. She gets the ball here, Madgen. Bakovic is in, that's a worry for the Kiwis. Zabek, it's a poor pass, should have just elevated and gone herself. Eight seconds on the shot clock, Susie B doesn't worry about that whatsoever. The Batgirl, when in doubt, throw it into the Batgirl and she'll get the job done down low. And again though, going to her left. Here it is. They should be locked in on her left hand. If she's going to beat you, which she still very well might, Make her beat, her beat you with the non-preferred right rather than going with the regulation left. So a couple of baskets there to the Australians and after it was as close as 11, it's now back out to 17, which is the margin at half time. Now it's three on one. Madgen into Bakovic, that's got to be a tall fern ball. Taylor did really well just to disrupt her. Madgen probably could have gone herself here. It is and should have. Whenever in your two-on-one situation, the golden rule is you penetrate until the defense stops you. That time the defense, little head fake, and uh, caused the turnover. Good defense. A minute until three-quarter time. Here's Cox, known as a sharpshooter, and her reputation is improving here in the second half. Well, didn't have a great start to the game, but she's found her range now. In true shooter mentality, before that shot she was 2 of 13, but she shot that like she was 10 of 13. Good confidence. Bakovic, the Aussies are just killing the New Zealanders on the, gla on the glass at the moment. We'll get you some numbers on that when we can, but it's just, uh, it's a familiar tale. That's certainly an area the Australians knew they would have a dominance. Imagine...
Can't go back to back on the triples. Oh, but she can intercept. It was a poor pass. And Bakovic airballs a layer. Well, there have been a few curious errors in the match, and that was that was one of the comical, might be another way of describing it. Susie probably won't want to uh, have a look at that one on the, the game review. Yes. <laughs> just mistimed it, and Abby Bishop showing good presence there just to shoot it back up. But uh, as you mentioned, a significant rebounding count, rebounding edge to Australia, 21 to 33. As you'd expect with the size advantage that the Opals do have over New Zealand. So Abby Bishop on the line. Another one of only two members of this squad that went to the World Championships in 2010. She's dominated the boards as well, done a great job. She's got the, the seven rebounds to go along with her ten points. One shot left in the quarter. Ten seconds until three-quarter time. Edmondson will want to give it up. Taylor... A bit too strong. Oh. Harmon needs to go. She's wow. fouled. That's well done with 0.1 of a second on the clock. Oh, oh, Beautifully timed. It was. Harmon may have got away with a little travel. We take a look at the rebound here. Just a shuffling of the feet. Definitely got away with the travel. But most certainly a foul there. And well, if it's all right for Le LeBron James, it's all right here in the Oceania Championship Series, isn't it? No, no usually, comments. <laughs> usually in the FIBA game, they uh, adju adjudicate the game more as the great James Naismith invented, and we'll call it as the rule book, rule book would, uh, would state it. And that's three-quarter time, and much improved showing from the tall ferns in that quarter. They actually outscored the Australia tip that term. 20 to 16 to cut a 17-point halftime margin back to 13 at three-quarter time. It's Australia 59, New Zealand 46, with 10 minutes to go, Andrew Gaze. It is, and New Zealand would be very happy with that quarter to come in uh, with the margin the Boomers had, excuse me, the Opals had at half time to battle their way through. They're not going to throw in the tower. They've got some great character. And uh, I think the effort and the, the reward they got for their intensity on the defensive end is what it was all about. They really cranked it up on defense and uh, caused a few turnovers and... It uh, generated some good scoring opportunities. It did, and Gillian Harmon was pretty impressive in that quarter with a handful of baskets, and Edmondson finally was able to connect on some, and so was this young lady, Michaela Cox. She got involved, beautiful dump inside there to Warburton, and open, and open the scoring in the quarter. But as you said, Drew, it was the New Zealand defense, as Matt Purcell, and Matt Taylor, I should say, I'll get it right eventually. Uh, <laughs> she splashed that triple, and they were able to get out and run. The problem was, when they were running for a few minutes, they all wanted a sub. <laughs> they just weren't quite able to keep up that intensity. And that's the depth issue, isn't it? Because the Opals can go to the bench, whereas the New Zealanders don't quite have the same level of consistency as they go down to spots 7, 8, 9 and 10 on their roster. No, you're dead right. And it's uh, very labour-intensive what New Zealand have to do on the defensive end. And they got their 7 or 8 white players that are their main players. And uh, as such, the Opals can continue to, to maintain that uh, relentless pressure for just more longer periods in the game. But uh, if they could just find an answer for, for Batnovich down low, she's been dominant. She's got the 16 points and uh, always provide that, that bailout option if ever their offense breaks down or, or when New Zealand went to the zone. Plonk it into Batkovich down low and they haven't done it. It's, always, it's very, very easy up here in the commentary booth to comment on how you should be playing defense, but fundamentally they've got to get on her, her left hand and make her uh, to go right and see what she, if she's capable of being so efficient going that way. Well, I don't think they're alone in being unable to stop her. Last, her last full WNBL season, she averaged 25 points a game and I guarantee you that at least 23 of those 25 points came on her left hand. It's just one of those things, even when you know exactly what you're going to do, or what you have to do, sometimes with the truly the great players, you just can't stop it. Well, that's... Even there, she spins one way and then still ends up with the left. And it's going to be a Tall Ferns ball. And the great Lana Leonard Copeland, they always used to say that he was predominantly right. And we'd say, why don't you go left? He said, hey, until they stop me from going right, there's no need to go left. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So what can the Tall Ferns do here? This is, of course, a three-game series. The prize at the end of it for the winner of the series is a spot in the Beijing Olympics draw. The Beijing, the London Olympics. It's a, not the first time I've done that. We should uh, make sure we've got our Olympiads correct as Abby Bishop connects on that, of course, for the loser of the series, as we said at the top of the program. It's not the end. They still have a chance to go through a second chance Olympic qualification tournament, yeah, but that will be a very, very tough tournament next year as Lisa Warburton has a seat. I think she just, just got hurt knee. in that, uh, yeah, maybe knocked knees with an opponent in the marking in the uh, rebounding contest. She seems to be okay. She's worked hard tonight. She's got the five points and picked up three rebounds, two of five from the field, and one of one from the free throw line. And but just at just 183 centimetres to be the starting centre against a team. They've, the, the Kiwis have only got two, three players above six foot, and the Aussies have five. And for the Kiwis, two of them aren't, two of those three aren't really in their best rotation anyway. So they are severely outsized the tall ferns or the not so tall ferns as the case may be Cox misfires there Flanagan comes away with the ball for Australia Bibby's pass is a little bit loose but it's good enough to get to Bakovic she couldn't connect with Zavik and it's going to be a tall ferns ball despite the protestations of the Australians and there's been an overall. referee Vaughan Maybury here. Let's have a look at this. Definitely. Yeah, Vaughan Maybury is overruling. And it's a correct call, definite deflection there. I think it was Harmon who got a hand in. Elena Chinova is in charge out of the three referees, being the impartial, but the referee from Australia, Vaughan Maybury, was the player was the one who had the best side of that and he provided the overall. So it's an Opal's ball. Bishop, good trap there by Cox, almost worried her out of it. Pakovic just had, look at that beautiful use of the right arm to give herself some space as well. She's got great touch around the basket. When she goes to the middle, she can put it up ever so softly on that hoop and drops him in. No take, please. No take. She's been constantly giving instructions there. The Russian referee, Shinova. And that time, the New Zealanders cough up the basketball. Good. Jew secures the rebound. Bibby forcing it up. Jessica Bibby played limited minutes coming in and trying to have an impact. But we all know that she's not going to be shy when she's out on the floor. Taylor. Two Beautiful balls. shot. Taylor. 63 plays 48 now for the New Zealanders. Bishop under pressure, forces it up, draws the foul. And right there, we've seen it so many times with the Opals, just get it done on the low block. And New Zealand have tried a few different strategies. You just can see the size advantage there. Edmondson really no chance once, once uh, Bishop receives the ball. And got to do a better job of trying to front it down low. You are exposed for the lob pass, but provided you've got some, some weak side help and you've got enormous pressure on the ball, you have a chance if you're going to front the low post. The Australians have only got a six-point advantage as far as points in the paint goes, 26 to 20, which might sound surprising, but when you are throwing the free throw attempts, they've had 16 points from the foul line against six. It shows that they have been dominant from the inside as Pops finishes well there. Keeps the margin at 15 with seven minutes to go in the match. Here's Bakovic. She's got range. She's got range. Bakovic showing us the complete package tonight. Inside, outside, she splashes the trifecta. 21 points to Susie Bakovic. Far and away leading all scorers. She's the most experienced player at this level. As we said a bit earlier, a couple of Olympic silver medals to her. There's a foul against Australia's Carly Wilson, is it? Number six. Oh. Good pass. We saw the replay there. The one-handed pass to kick it out to Bakovic from the top of the key. 
She has been dominant. No hands. Susie Batkovic no had Please a really, really anything. difficult Clear. WNBL season last year. In fact, she had a, a horror 2010, really, at both the professional level, basketball-wise, and also personally had a, a family bereavement and just a, was really welcoming 2011 and what it might bring. And she's on the international stage. She's doing well at the moment. But she couldn't do anything there to prevent Michaela Cox. Handy little move and good help from Rebecca Jew just pushing Bakovic out of her path and doing enough. Carly Wilson there. If the player's got such a wide open penetrating lane to the basket. All the help rotations, all the sophisticated defences you throw out there, they're always going to be stretched if a person can put the ball on the floor and they have such an easy pathway to the hoop. Here comes Taylor. Hunt battled hard and she fouled Taylor. But she worked hard having coughed up the ball at half court there, Nicole Hunt. And oh, what she did. Have a look at this. Again, it's the trap situation. They've been working this pretty well, haven't they? Taylor just ripped it out of her hands. And that's the cardinal sin we see. Hunt taking that step over the centre line. As soon as you get there, you've got the greatest defender on the court, that being the centre line. They trap her right on the centre line, forced the turnover. Fundamental error. Sloppy play for the most part of the second half by the Opals, and good on the New Zealand team for being able to take advantage of that. Right, we're going to listen to Carry Graf when we can. The margin was 17 at half time. And now it's down to 15. The Tall Ferns have been as close as 11 in this half. We've got six and a half minutes to go in the match. And Susie Bakovic is leading all scorers with 21. We can now go down to Carrie Graff. Here she is, the Australian coach. And then we're staying, we're staying with the thumbs out. Get it to the wing, get the screen, seal the centre. Right, all the Purcell's got four, the big girl's got four. We get it inside, we put it on the rim. And again there with the defensive pre the, the defensive foul situation, Kerry Graff trying to make the advantage of it. But they've been able to exploit that all night. As you mentioned, Batkovic with 21 and Abby Bishop with 15. The vast majority of those coming with points right around the basket. And again, uh, Kerry Graff in that timeout just wanting to exploit it. But I don't think Kerry Graff is going to come away from this game all that pleased with the form of the Opals. They've always never looked likely of losing the game, but just haven't shown great authority and the turnovers, a few sloppy passes, and just the overall feel from the Opals hasn't been great. And I think uh, you never want to make an excuse, but any time you're playing 12 players and you're rotating them in and out, it's sometimes it's very difficult to get that rhythm. Yep. And players are coming in and knowing that their, their, their minutes are going to be a little bit spasmodic, that uh, sometimes they make decisions that they wouldn't normally make if they're... Uh, under the normal circumstances. And I guess the bigger picture for some of these Australian players is if they are successful in this series, they've all got one eye on that London Olympic squad because when you think about the players that aren't here, the players that are over in the WNBA, you say Jackson, Taylor, Cambage, Snell, Phillips and O'Hay. Well, that's, uh, that's half a dozen locks well, there's, for, well, there's, for that Australian Olympic side if they do succeed in this series against the Tall Ferns. And so it means that some of these players... Uh, I, I think you've only, got, you've only got three absolute 100% locks. I mean, the others are highly likely. Taylor splashes the three. And the New Zealanders are back to within 10 here. So they have scored the last eight points in a row. Maybe Kerry Graff needs to start talking about the offensive execution instead of just the defensive. And that was a terrible pass by Tolo. And the New Zealanders, they've got a three on two here. What can they do? Cox, she's not going to die wondering. Really needed to stick that shot. Great defensive transition wow. by Mariana Tolo. She haired down the court, took the rebound. But unfortunately, Bakovic coughs it up down the other end and she's hurt. hurt. The New Zealanders can get to it in single digits. Cox blocked by Wilson. A couple of big defensive plays by the Australians. Bakovic is still in trouble. Let's have a look at the incident. There was nothing under oh, the water, oh, just yeah. a little kick, an accidental kick or maybe some cramp, is it? No, it's hard it to know. just stood on the foot, the rolling of the left ankle. It didn't look like a real bad one, but just those, one of those quick little tweaks. But more importantly, with five minutes and 17 seconds remaining, New Zealand have given themselves a chance. 
They've had a couple of good looks the last few times down the floor. Get this under, into single figures like that, and we have got a ball game on our hands. And the bench are up. As they should be, New Zealand. Ten points unanswered from the Tall Ferns. They've got a beautiful rhythm going, and they look like, have they gone into a zone? Or is Why would they have? And this is what's caused the trouble. Tolo misses on the inside. Hodges with the offensive rebound. The Opals scrap, and they come up with it. They look tentative. They look nervous, the Opals. They wouldn't have expected this. Full credit to New Zealand. Wilson can stick this. Not this time. Oh, well done by Taylor. Keeps it alive. It's a tall black, tall fern ball. That is one thing about the zone. It's hard to rebound out of it. You've got to be prepared to make some efforts. And Taylor did then. Eight point game. New Zealand has the ball. Make a basket here. And my word, there'll be some tension in the Opals camp. Here's Cox. She's come alive in the second half. She's got a dozen points. Wants to go herself against Flanagan. That's hard to do. Oh, and she passes it to nobody. Cox. That is an error. A huge error in the context of the game. The two, well, they're about to become Townsville teammates, Cox and Flanagan. Just tried to do a little bit too much off the dribble. She saw the referee, thought it was one of her teammates, and unfortunately, he's not allowed to catch the ball. Where are the class jumpers for the referees here? Wow, but just tried to do a little bit too much off the dribble, Bam. Stick with what that's got him here. Good ball movement, then the penetration. Yeah, back and, to the uh, man. Put some pressure on the Opals. Flanagan. Oh, that's clutch. She snaps a 10-point run, does Rachel Flanagan. She had the great defensive play down one end and then buries the triple. 11 points. A little bit more comfortable now for the Opals. Vakovic preparing to come back to the game. That's good news for them. Cox goes herself again. Jew and Warburton. Great hustle. Chase it down. Second chance. They've got an open player. Oh, Flanagan again. They're still in the gun. Go to Tall Ferns. They can't finish. Edmondson probably wasn't what she should have been doing there. They had an open three-point threat out behind the arc. But they couldn't get it to McMeek and Rusko. So the Opals can calm down with three minutes to go. Last two possessions by New Zealand just went away from their structure a little bit. Tolo locked in with Jew, and that's going to be five fouls on Rebecca Jew. So, a 21-year-old from the University of Hawaii will be sitting down, and that is a timeout. And you'll, timeout's been called. you'll look at her stat line, and you'll see that uh, she's got the four points and only picked up the two rebounds, but that undersells what she's done tonight. Provided a good physical inside presence, present plenty of hustle, and that uh, cost her a five fouls, but a, all round a very, very good 13, 14 minutes played by Rebecca Jew tonight. All right, there's three minutes to go. The Tall Ferns trail by 11. Here's their coach, Kennedy, Kennedy I want Tony Kerry Hunter. Engaged in this. All right, Mickey up the floor. Playing defense here, we're matched up. We will go back to zone at some stage, but for now we're matched. Mickey on the pass, you're going off. Lisa, as Tony dribbles to the elbow, you're lifting and wheeling behind. She's going to be outside the three-point line. On this. Mickey, you're going all the way to the corner on the curl, on the flare. And Jill's, you're lifting high. Tony, you pass the net and the back cuts for you, so it's, it's just dribble. You don't even turn the footwork and faking at least Lisa's wheeling really out. It's pass, hard back cuts. The play after that is transition post for Jill. What's the timing that I go out here? As soon as Tony goes, you go. All right, Mickey goes and curls. Lisa wheels up behind. And you see back to in the paint. That's Lisa open on the perimeter. Feet up, feet up, toe. Back to Vince. Come back into the game for the Opals with an 11-point lead. Michaela Cox has tried her absolute heart out tonight. She's got 13 points and four rebounds and the three assists, but has not been able to find the rhythm with her score, with her shooting. Five of 21. She's had 21 shots. Yeah, more than just about more than double any of her teammates. Now we know she needs to see a lot of the ball, but uh, given those numbers, perhaps needed to be more of a distributor rather than a shooter this evening. 
Bakovic, and she's in there crashing the glass too. Warburton didn't get the box out done, and it's cost New Zealand possession. Susie shot the ball and she was straight in there. Warburton not awake to it. Really love the endeavour of New Zealand tonight. They have not been overawed by the much more high profile Opals. Here's Wilson. The Opals lead by 11 in game one of this series. Hodges misses. Again chases down the loose ball. Two and a half minutes to go in the match. The Opals now look like they've settled after the Tall Ferns got to within eight in this last quarter. Flanagan waltzes through. Well done there by Harmon. Changed her shot and certainly upset her rhythm. And now, what can Cox do? Oh, terrible pass. Susie, I think, got a little touch. Yes. And in a very, very hey, pro bullet. <laughs> professional way, she tried to look it off, but a little, little touch of the ball. Have a look at this. Pop. Little oh. touch. <laughs> she knows she's caught with her hand in the cookie jar. But referee Chernobyl was all over it. <laughs> she was right on the spot. That's what we want for these FIBA officials. It's 11 points the difference. What can the Tall Ferns do? They've got two minutes to pull a rabbit out of the hat. Taylor, she's got 13. She's still got 13. She scraps with Wilson. Can't come up with possession. The Opals are back to four out of their five for their starting lineup. So they're serious about this finish. Need to secure this win. Zabek will go to the line. The referee's really letting the girls play off the ball. A lot of cuts and motion happening, a lot of holding. And there we see the penetration. And with the defense being spread so much as they try and play up and in the lanes, those penetration, penetrating lanes are going to be available for them. Six points, eight rebounds, five assists to Hannah Zabek. Pretty impressive all-round numbers from her. And her ability to disrupt it, particularly at the defensive end, is excellent. And Kennedy Kariyama, or is it Karen Graff? Karen Graff wants to talk about it. There's 90 seconds to go. And the Opals look to have this one safe. They look to have just been able to uh, secure this one. They lead by 13. It's 73 to 60 as we head into the Australian huddle. Be prepared for some sort of double action, even from the side, and they're going to try and screen someone. You guys are just communicate, switch off any of that action. It's got to be switched offensively. Okay, stay with shakes if we need to use clock, or go to some horns, horns down, and we can still get rip isolations. Any low clock, come to thumbs. Who's guarding you? Okay, so bring bring Sue's up on the thumbs. Okay, and then Sue, she looks to roll down big on that. Okay, we have one foul to give, and we got one timeout. It's about the switching communication, deep and the possessions. Yeah, they're going to foul you, and you're not going to get. It's not going to be called. You're going to hold and block out and get the ball, right? So I go and shakes, low clock thumbs. If we need a little break up play, we go to horns down, hit the post for Sue's. Okay, you got it. We got to get the stop seat, all right? No three-point shots, nothing for Purcell. No long ones for Walbert, nothing for Fox. Wait, we got it's never too late to uh, make sure that every I is dotted and every T is crossed. Well, you do. You've got to pay attention. And uh, the only way New Zealand, if they're going to have a miracle happen, they need to blaze away from the three-point line. And there need to be some... Uh, catastrophic turnovers by the Opals for them to lose, but stranger things have happened. The New Zealanders have shot the ball 33% for the match, 36% from beyond the arc. Serviceable from beyond the arc, but probably not going to get the job done. Generally, 33% from the field. And Harmon hands off towards Taylor. Now Harmon goes again. Tough shot. Real tough shot. Very tough shot falling away. And there's the foul. Number four. They're going to try and use that, put the girls to the line, the Opals to the line, and hope that they miss free throws. Fairly ambitious strategy. But I tell you what, the New Zealand, have wet, the way they've rallied and got back to the game has been impressive, and it's been done with their defence, restricting the Opals to 36% from the field. And early on in the game, there we see the very clear-cut foul by Cox. 
and just 30 points so far in this second half after the Opals have put up 43 in the opening 20 minutes. Just supreme effort by New Zealand, showing great character, and I'm sure their coaching staff would be very impressed in the way they didn't throw in the towel and let's, battled away. And let's not forget, she gets a bonus here because Lisa Warburton a bit anxious to uh, get in and put the block out on Bakovic. And let's not forget, of course, that they're doing this without their starting point guard, Angela Marino, with Tall Ferns. So maybe if she's able to come back and be near full fitness for game two, it might just change the complexion of this matchup. Well, Marino would make a big difference to this team, take a little bit more pressure off Cox. Because right now, Cox has had to do a lot of the ball-carrying duties. And Move her into the two. And uh, you can slide her into the two and make more of a, an offensive a target out of her like that coming off screen but when you got to do both bring it up the floor create do it all yourself it uh, it does have a, a big difference and it also hurts their depth their rotation is pretty short at the best of times and here we see cox putting the ball to the floor they need real quick shots and of course they're not in a happy situation because the opals aren't in the bonus well they are now cox oh, gee almost traveled good balance i tell you what I love her commitment. <laughs> yeah. Things haven't gone all that well for, her for as far as the... Uh, She's a girl after your own heart, isn't she? Just keep uh -huh. jacking that thing up. <laughs> Sign of a good shooter when you don't lose faith in your own ability. And although she's uh, had a very, very poor shooting night, you can tell by her technique and the way she's gone about it, she has not lost confidence in her own ability. And if you're going to be a shooter, particularly one that can perform in a clutch, they're the characteristics you need. She won't have fond memories of this game because of the way she has gone about it and the success, success she's had from the field. But, uh, gee whiz, you can see how when she gets on a, on a roll, how she can uh, really be a game changer. And it's Abbott with one out of two. That trip down. And the Tall Ferns come back. Oh, Zabek's out in the lanes. This will finish the match. Oh, oh no! Another layup missed. If only we were keeping a count. There have been an extraordinary number of layups missed in this game. Harmon does the Opals a favour and misses down the other end. Zavik again. They can take some time off the clock. They decide not to. This is just a bit of jungle ball here at the moment. Jungle or junk, did you say? Yeah, a bit of both. I think you can interchange those terms. Cox finishes after a nice little dish from Taylor. They want a foul. They can't do it. Zavik again. They finally get the foul done this time. It's Warburton. But a bit of a messy 60 seconds or so there from both teams. Yeah, and it's very frustrating if you're a coach in these circumstances where just some of the decision-making that's been going on, particularly if you carry Graf. I mean, the, tall, the uh, New Zealand team have got to come down here and, and blaze away and just hope that they're able to uh, string together some some very very quick plays but uh, the openers no need to get out there and run just take use it take some time off the clock put it in the book job done and has Abbott been very very good in this match she now has got herself up towards oh, that's a, another poor <laughs> shot had his Abbott up to 11 points in the match and hey your Lawrence. girl Michaela Cox <laughs> Uh, Michaela Cox, 6 of 24 from the field. 25%. Well, she has been shooting the ball well. 19 points per game in the Seaball, but this is a different standard of competition as Carly Wilson can't finish with a flurry. But the Opals get the job done. They lead the Oceania Olympic Qualification Series one zip after this match in the cage. Australia 77, New Zealand 64. And now for the Opals, the equation is simple. Win one more match, either in Brisbane on Friday or Sydney on Sunday. And they have booked their spot for the London Olympics next year. Off the Tall Ferns, it's a tough road back from 1-0 down. And uh, look, they will need to improve, but hopefully they can, because that was a fantastic fighting effort in the second half. They will they'll take some uh, some positives out of the game, there's no doubt about that. The way they are on hang tough and, and not throw in the towel, great test of uh, their character, and they certainly ticked that box tonight. But you'd have to say it was just the size and the ability of that girl right there, Susie Batkovich, she created matchup nightmares.
for New Zealand and it's fair to say they can't play her in a one-on-one -on -one situation they'll consider maybe sending a double it's there you see it turns to her left easy jump shots all night and uh, they need to reassess the way they're going to try and contain her. As you said though, the New Zealanders kept coming at it, but the Australians were a little bit scrappy at times, weren't they? And so I think both teams, it's fair to say, will be better for the run. Well, New Zealand should look at this and say, hey, you know what? This Opals team is beatable. Yeah. And it's it's hard sometimes when the New Zealand team playing against a real high profile team, you can get overawed and you almost talk yourself into saying, well, we need to create some sort of miracle to win. On the evidence tonight, they don't need a miracle. They just need to play well, structure it up a little bit better defensively to try and contain the big girls inside. And this series is not over. No, it's not. Still got a couple of games to go. Michaela Cox with that beautiful finish. And then the Australians just probably going to start their cool down afterwards. We'll have a look at some of the numbers, the final numbers from the game. And as we said, the final score 77 to 64. And really, the Australians were, they were dominant in the rebound count as well, 46 to 29. And the field goal percentage, they were pretty impressive. They shot the ball a little bit better than the New Zealanders. But that's it from us, and we thank you very much, wherever you are for your company. Thanks very much to Andrew Gaze. Pleasure. 1-0 to the Opals, and we look forward to you joining us once again when we bring you the action from Brisbane on Friday.